September 18th. His temptation and ours. We do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Hebrews 4 verse 15. Until we are born again, the only kind of temptation we understand is the kind mentioned in James 1 verse 14. Each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. But through regeneration, we are lifted into another realm where there are other temptations to face, namely the kind of temptations our Lord faced. The temptations of Jesus had no appeal to us as unbelievers because they were not at home in our human nature. Our Lord's temptations and ours are in different realms until we are born again and become his brothers. The temptations of Jesus are not those of a mere man, but the temptations of God as man. Through regeneration, the Son of God is formed in us. See Galatians 4 verse 19. And in our physical life, he has the same setting that he had on earth. Satan does not tempt us just to make us do wrong things. He tempts us to make us lose what God has put into us through regeneration, namely, the possibility of being of value to God. He does not come to us on the premise of tempting us to sin, but on the premise of shifting our point of view, and only the Spirit of God can detect this as a temptation of the devil. Temptation means a test of the possessions held within the inner spiritual part of our being by a power outside us and foreign to us. This makes the temptation of our Lord explainable. After Jesus' baptism, having accepted his mission of being the one who takes away the sin of the world, John 1 verse 29, he was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness, Matthew 4 verse 1, and into the testing devices of the devil. Yet he did not become weary or exhausted. He went through the temptation without sin, and he retained all the possessions of his spiritual nature completely intact.